Elite Sleep Boxing Repeat. Welcome back to another weekly preview. It's nice to be joined by Elliot as always. Um, it's not as much of a packed week this week as, as we've seen. However, it's another fight week in London, which it feels like those are pretty relentless at the moment. We've just kind of come off the back of Jazora Pulev, Joe Joyce, Christian Hammer, and then we've got another um, Wembley, uh, another fight week in London at the Cough Fox Arena, which Frank Warren and Queensbury Promotions are hosting. Elliot, thank you for joining me as always. How are you? Very well, thank you. Very well. Um, still, still buoyed a bit by by Chisora's victory on Saturday. Um, but yeah, looking forward to, like you said, it's a quite a week. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to, to to previewing it with you. Yeah, yeah. Look, looking forward to it. Before we get started, going to ask you one. Going to throw a curveball in there. Derek Chisora will fight again. If it was <laughs> up to you, if he had one fight left for entertainment purposes, who would you want to see him fight? <laughs> Oh, he's, he's put entertainment purposes in there. Like, I was, I was going to say Lucas Brown. Just get something easy and then fuck off into the sunlight. So I'm certain you've said entertainment purposes. Mm. Um, I see the names banded around. Like, was what was it? It was Ruiz, Ortiz, Brown. There's talk of Wilder. I don't want to see Wilder. Let's cut that straight out. I think, um, I think it Wilder stop him in the first round. Definitely rounds one or two if it came down to it. Billy Nelson was talking about Martin Bacoli. Don't want to see that either. I think Bacoli's way too much for him at this stage. Um, I would like to maybe. I mean, the thing is, I think like Ortiz is old as well, so it'd be another like old opponent. But I still think he'd outbox him. Yeah. So in a weird way, like I just think for my own personal entertainment, I'd like to see him fight Andrew Ruiz if I had to see him fight any of those guys, just because I quite like Ruiz. Quite like to see him back. Quite like to see that fight. But equally, I don't really want to see they'll lose. So. Yeah. Let him fight Lucas Brown on an undercard and then let him just go away somewhere and like enjoy himself. Yeah, we shall see. I know that Andy Ruiz and Luis Ortiz are fighting in September. So maybe the winner or maybe the loser of that fight. Who knows? But we, we shall see. But anyway, on to this week's on to this week's fights. Um, as I mentioned, there is a quite, to be fair, quite a stacked show at the Copper Box um this weekend. Titles here, there, and everywhere. Um, yeah, not not a bad show in in my opinion from top to top top to bottom. I think it's better than the Joe Joyce show a couple of weeks ago in in, in my opinion, just in terms of oh, yeah. potential competitive fights and actual meaningful fights as well. I think this card's got a bit more about it. Um, going to cover four fights here. Going to kick off first one: Lennox Clark, Mark Heffron, British and Commonwealth Super Middleweight Titles. Um, arguably a 50-50 fight. I know Lennox Clark had that. Fantastic win over Willie Hutchinson last year, which a lot of people didn't expect him to do. Mark Heffron, you know, has, has fought for the British title in the past, drew against Denzel Bentley, and then actually got stopped in the rematch. Um, but yeah, both fighters with 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 good records, similar amount of fights. I imagine Lennox Clark is the favourite here. But yeah, looking forward to seeing how this one how this one goes. What are you, what are your thoughts on it, Elliot? Um, yeah, I would actually agree. I think I saw I saw Clark. In that victory over over Willie Hutchinson, I was actually impressed by him. I saw also saw him fight Leo, Leo Ronnie Richards, um, and again taking Ronnie Richards for for a split decision mm. loss is commendable. So I was impressed by him on both those two performances. And before I think before that Richards fight, I mean he fought a couple of ten rounders, a couple of sort of eight rounders, but he was coming into that on sort of two four rounders and a sixth rounder. So you're sitting there going, actually, it's an impressive performance. Um, Heffron, I've seen a bit of him. I saw him fight. I saw the loss to Bentley. Um, the second time, saw the first one as well. I make, I do make Lennox Clark's slight favourite here. Um, if I'm being perfectly honest, I think obviously there's not too much in the kind of um, in the well, there's not too much in the kind of physical physical um, stats between the pair of them. But I look at it as well, going British title, so guaranteed to be a decent fight. Um, I think if I had to put money on it, I'd probably say. I'd say Clark points. I mean, he's only got what eight KOs out of, out of twenty victories, so Clark points is the way I'd lead. Uh, way I'd lead on this one, but I think it's a good fight. British title fight is always a good fight, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that one. Yeah, no, look, looking look, looking forward to that one. Um, yeah, should be really good. I'll um, I'll hand over to you for for the second fight that we're going to be talking about. Yeah, so I mean, on the undercard of this, we've got um, <coughs> Hamza Shiraz versus Francisco Torres. And this is a, a fight that's actually for the for the WBC silver midweight title. Um, but obviously, people will know. So you come into this fight, you've got Hamza and Shiraz as a as a prospect with sort of 15, 15 and 0 record, eleven victories by way of KO, and most recent of which was an impressive KO victory against Jez Smith. But I think there's also arguably some question marks that have been around around him over that performance with Bradley Ski. 
Um, I mean, yes, he did answer them in sort of emphatic style against Jess Smith, but Jess Smith, again, is not necessarily... If you're a prospect, you want to go into the world level, world level opposition, then you should be beating Jess Smith, frankly. So I think those question marks still, still kind of result. Um, Torres, he's 32 years old. I find so from Argentina, got a majority decision draw with Jose Benavides um, recently on his record, which is commendable. Um, other than that, you've got a lot of fights essentially sort of in and around Argentina, 10 rounders, not stacked um, CV other than that. But he comes into it with sort of 17 and 3. Um, 73 and one, so he has lost, has also been KO'd, but granted that was back in 2017. So I'm sort of reluctant to, to lean too heavily onto that. But I think this is a this is a good fight for for sure, to be perfectly honest. He's ranked 13 now, WBO. So he's sort of creeping into that kind of level where he needs he needs some victories of this kind of ilk, really, um, against a fighter who I mean it's good matchmaking as well. I mean, Torres only got five KOs out of 17 victories. So you sit there and go. Arguably doesn't carry the power that's going to stop Shiraz if still yeah. learning and still obviously capable of being caught, as we saw against Skeet. So I think it's a good fight. I would, again, it's in the UK, I would lean probably towards Shiraz um, just because, I mean, he's taller, he's got a bit more range on him, he has got power, undefeated. So yeah, I'm, I'm carrying a bit of momentum. So I would look at it maybe as that way and think that he's probably going to probably gonna win. But 10-round fight, could go points, could be KO. I mean, I don't know what your thoughts are on, on how it's going to end. I'm going to go Shiraz, but I'm going to leave it to you to tell me what your thoughts are mm. and whether you think Shiraz will win by KO or points. If yeah. You think he so it's interesting because I feel like if you're getting a draw against Jose Benavidez Jr., then you're not you're not a bad fighter. So I think mm. that this is actually a significant step up in class for Shiraz. However, just had a look at Torres and it seems to me that he's really... It seems to me like he's really more of a super welter than a middleweight. Mm. And the fact that Shiraz, I've seen him like in the flesh at press conferences, he's very tall for a middleweight. I think he's six foot two, six foot three. He's very, yeah, very, very tall for middleweight. And I just think when it gets to the two of them being in the ring, I would be interested to see the difference in weight. So that's kind of, I think it's a good step up but i just think that he's actually the guy torres is actually a super well to wait um and yeah that's it. but yeah so i'm kind of got mixed mixed feelings about it i do expect shiraz to win i do think shiraz is, is the real deal um it's interesting that the route he's going down in terms of fighting for this wbc silver title in his in his 15th 16th fight um so we'll see yeah i'll, I'll go for shiraz but I, I do think this is an intriguing fight we saw shiraz losing against Bradley Skeet. Um and so we'll have, we'll have to see what happens in this in in, in this fight. You know, Torres he's not going to mm. stop he's not going to stop Shiraz but there could be times when he's kind of outboxing him possibly winning rounds but yeah we'll see but I think it's an intriguing one. I'm going to throw a little curveball at you as well uh, in in retaliation to your initial curveball you threw at me. <laughs> that is if Ham Sam Shiraz wins on Saturday night obviously around British interest, obviously, around that, that sort of weight. You've got sort of Liam Williams sort of knocking around Felix Cash. But there are other sort of names, obviously, the higher up you get, like obviously Eubank Jr. as well. But then obviously, you've got Charlo, Canelo, <laughs> Golovkin, all these sort of guys. So, where would you, you know, Murata, and sorry, Munguia, all these sort of guys, where would you sort of pick Shiraz to go after this, really? Because it'd be sort of 16 victories then against Torres, be quite a credible victory, sort of beating the likes, like you say, of Jess Smith, Ski. Where do you sort of match him after this? Um, so I think he's still very young. He's still a very young fighter. So I just think that I don't think he's not going to be, you know, fighting anyone of significant note for 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 for, for a decent period. Mm. Um, I just think he'll still be getting experience, still be getting rounds, and then maybe next year he'll be it will be time to kind of throw him in there with 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 kind of a top fifteen, top twenty middleweight. Um, that's those are my those are my kind of thoughts. I think that obviously you can't deny that he's with Queensbury. So is he going to be fighting a matchroom mm. fighter in his next fight? <laughs> Probably not. Um, so we'll 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 see. We'll, we'll see. Like I mean, if Hamza Shear is against. If I would love to see him fight for the British title, but it doesn't feel like that's the route he's going down. Yeah. I feel like Denzel Bentley's got feels like he's got a lot of options in his next fight. But if that could be made, that'd be fantastic. And Bentley. Um, he is with you know he is with Queens Queensbury so why not make that fight for the British title and possibly this WBC silver title I would love that but 
is that going to happen? I don't know. But that's one fight. I, don't no, I agree with you. Obviously. I think, like you say, it's a young fighter. So we'd almost give him the pass to have a couple of easy development fights. But it's, it's interesting to see what they do, what they do with him over at Queensbury. But I'm yeah, going to yeah. dovetail back to you now for another fight on the on the undercard. Nice one. So it's another another title fight. Um, it's Nick Ball, who sh- surprised a lot of people at Wembley Stadium back in April on the Tyson Fury Dillian White undercard. Stopped Isaac Lowe in the sixth round. Um, gave Isaac Lowe the second loss of his career. Um, fantastic. Well, I don't know how to describe the stoppage. Isaac Lowe, from what I remember, thought the fight was was being paused, so kind of just didn't put his hands up and let Nick Ball just have a free shot at him. It's a bit of a strange way to end the fight, but anyway, Nick Ball did very well, can can punch very hard, and yeah, kind of. I feel like it's an interesting one now because before Isaac Lowe, a lot of people outside of Liverpool, weren't really aware of him. Whereas now we've all seen him on BT Sport Box Office at Wembley Stadium on a big stage. He fights Nathaniel Kokolo Low, I think is how you say his name, on Saturday. Um, he is 14-3-1. I don't believe he's ever been stopped. Um, and yeah, Nick Ball, it's Nick Ball's 15-0 and um, and it's a chance for him to get another win. Um, and yeah, the WBC silver featherweight title is, is 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 on the line so yeah we'll see what happens in my looking at it out of the fights we're going to discuss i think it could be the least competitive mm. if i was to make a prediction um and yeah i think i think it's just a chance now for nick ball to there'll be more eyes on him now so do you want to take a bigger risk now that now that you've gotten to this stage possibly not um but yeah, from what I've seen of him, I know we've interviewed him a couple of times on on, on ESBR. So I'm interested to see what he's what, what he's what he's got to show and where, where his where his career is going. You know what? I'm going to start off here, and it's not often I do this, but I'm going to credit <coughs> our distinguished friend Paul Kelly, um, mm. who's not with us today. Um, it's a bit sombre. He's, he's on holiday. He's not dead. And we're, um, <laughs> at least he was the one that that first sort of put me onto Nick Ball again. Like before that Isaac Lowe fight, I, have, I was like Lowe will probably win this on points. Mm. Is probably the way I was going. And then, like you say, it stopped a bit. It stopped a bit controversially, but equally, it was an impressive performance. Um, so again, I'm like as you were mentioning those eyes on him. I am actually one of those eyes that is now on him. Yeah. Um, and again, like you say, like the other guy, I don't know too much about him to be perfectly honest. I mean, what 33 years old. Um, out of Namibia, which again, I'm always like thinking African lads tend to be quite hard, but at the same time, it's like I expect Ball to win this. Um, so I'm basing that again, really, on just on the last performances. Again, like you say, like he does carry power, so it's almost in a way that kind of eight KOs out of 15 victories to me is something that is probably a bit lower than I expected it to be, based mm. on, on how I'm seeing him fight against Isaac Lowe. So I actually expect that to go up a bit. I'm actually probably going to back him for a KO victory here. Um, yeah. You know, like twelve rounds. Um, the guy who's is fighting is coming into it on a on a victory over a twelve round, but six rounds. He hasn't really gone. He's never gone twelve rounds. Well, sorry, I say that he hasn't gone twelve rounds since twenty nineteen. He's been fighting a lot of sort of six, ten rounders that haven't that haven't gone the distance. Um, so yeah. I think I am expecting I'm expecting Ball to win probably by KO. To be perfectly honest, yeah, I think one point I'd make is that I think with Nick Ball's career so far. He's had a fair few fights against journeymen who don't really get stops. Mm. Um, and I feel like that kind of maybe explains the lack of chaos. I agree with you. I think he, he does punch hard. He can punch. I just think he's gone He's gone up against journeymen who, re- who rarely get stopped in like four rounders um, yeah, yeah. In, his early, in his early career. But I, yeah, I do ex- expect him to kind of, um, yeah, I do, I, do, I do expect him to keep, to keep going. I feel like in a couple of his fights, he's won on points, but knocked his opponent down in, in the process. So we will see. He's, he's shot himself up really into that conversation with like, I mean, look mm. at other guys around that sort of division, British guys anyway, like, that's why he's like, you know, Jazza Dickens. I mean, obviously, like, Dog Bow's kicking around, mm. and Warrington Lee Wood at the top of it. I'm not suggesting throw him in with like Warrington and Wood, but I'm thinking it'd be quite interesting to see him maybe in a couple of fights' time fight someone like James Dickens. Might be quite interesting. I still think Dickens have too much for him at the moment. Obviously, like you say, he's a young fighter, he's a former journeyman, but it'd be interesting to see and see where, where he goes, to be honest, after this. Yeah, definitely. And also, like, he's someone who, from what I can see, has come up from the small hall scene as well, which is I really enjoy seeing. He's not someone who, you know, made his pro, pro debut on, t- on, on, on on live TV or anything like that. And obviously, obviously, it's just a nice story. He was given this opportunity against Isaac Lowe on a massive stage 
didn't kind of succumb to the pressure despite as uh, considering Isaac Lowe had been on much bigger stages and yeah, yeah so it's it's a nice story I've interviewed him let me ask you though because you were like you said you were, you guys mm. attended a lot of small pool shows mm. um was Nick one of those guys I mean I was obviously fighting sort of been around Liverpool area but was he one of those guys that on the sort of small hall scene was was referenced quite a lot was he someone that people saw as a prospect that could essentially ascend like this this way or was it kind of a, bit mm. of a surprise to see him I, th- I think he was seen as a bit of a prospect. I remember back in the old days of ESBR, we actually interviewed him when he was like four, five and oh. Um, so, yeah, I think he was, but I don't think maybe people expected him to kind of be challenged, you know, to kind of potentially have a ranking with the WBC, basically. Yeah. I think he was one of these guys who could maybe push on and fight for a British title. Um, but, yeah, but w- w- it'd be interesting to kind of, to have seen the early part, early early parts of his career, um, but yeah, I feel like you know, it's, it's interesting because he actually used to fight at, came in at lightweight a couple of times, and he's moved down in weight. So it's been an interesting career, but I think he's really he's, he comes across really well. So I'm really happy for him. Yeah. Um, cool. Final fight. It's, yeah. Back 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 to you. Back right to me. So um, so this is another fight on the card. Now I'm actually quite excited about this fight, even though it's not. Um, I expect it to be quite one sided. I'm um, I'm a big fan of Dennis McCann, so this is McCann versus James Beach Jr., uh, which is actually for the vacant WBC International Silver Featherweight title. Um, so McCann, obviously, as we know, is still a very young fighter, 21 years old, five seven. But then Beach himself is a young lad, 25 years old, comes in with a 14 and two record with only two KOs. So again, we look at it and going, he's not carrying significant power there. Um, McCann 12 and over six KOs, um, but looking at the kind of I mean, I'm excited for it, but I would have to say I do expect it to be fairly one-sided in favour of McCann. And I'm just looking at sort of the opponents that he's faced, the records they've had. You know, he's coming into it. He's been fighting. He's fought sort of Wembley Arena, full copper box, all those sort of places. But fighting guys with sort of 12 and 4, 15 and 4, 20 and 4 kind of records. Whereas you look at James Beach, he's not he's not coming to the fight with those sort of records. I mean, the last couple of fights he's had have been sort of against 0-5, 131 fighters. Had a couple of UD losses to Chris Bork, which again is commendable. Brad Foster lost him in UD as well, which is commendable. Um, but hasn't essentially beaten any of those guys you think would make him step up and beat sort of a, a McCann, especially the prospect of McCann as impressive as he's been. Um, but again, I kind of see this really as a chance for Dennis McCann, obviously in that same division we've been talking about, really, of sort of Nick Ball, Isaac Lowe, those sort of names, um, to actually make a bit of a statement, really, um, here, and then maybe just move on to better things. Um, I don't know how how you're seeing it, whether you see it possibly as being a KO victory for McCann or whether you see it being a points victory, um, whether you see it as, as one-sided as I potentially do. Um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think um, Dennis McCann, a couple of fights ago, was seen as the, the best British fighter with 10 fights or less. I know that was kind of up mm. for debate, but I think that that's quite clear that he was. I think it's, he, if at the age of 21... Is he Britain's best fighter under who's say twenty three or under? I think he probably is. To, to, yeah. to, to be honest, I think now after having this conversation with you, I think it's clear that Frank Warren has some pretty good prospects and fighters in his stable. They just perhaps don't get the exposure that they would do if, if they were with other promoters. Um, on this fight, it's an interesting one. I think is it Dennis McCann's toughest fight so far in his pro career. I think quite possibly. I think James Beach Jr. is a good is a good fighter. He just obviously lacks lacks a bit of power to, to mm-hmm. trouble McCann. But um no, but I'm look I'm look I'm looking forward to it. I just think McCann's such a prospect. He needs to fight decent fighters in order to actually be tested. I he think he can't keep going on the same kind of sort of level because I mean otherwise he kind of just could relax a little bit too much. Mm. Um obviously expect McCann to win and win fairly comfortably. But yeah, it's going to be interesting to see this fight and to see to see, see where he's at. I think this is interesting, actually, as you mentioned that, about being the, the best prospects of 23 and under. And the reason I say that is because I've always been quite a fan of Hopi Price, who's like 22 mm. at the moment. But then you're sitting there going, you look at it, and Hopi Price is 7-0. McCann's already raced to like 12-0. And so in a way, it's almost like, I mean, I know there's been other reasons for, <laughs> reasons for that, but you're sitting there going, actually, in a way, it's quite commendable that he is being a 21 sort of almost fast tracked, I think, in a way to sort of like better things. And I think, like, like you said, 21 years old, still very young, but at the same time, seems game and also seems to have that backing in Queensbury as well. So I'm quite excited. I think this is this is a good fight, like you say. It's a good fight. Someone who's been in with like Chris Ball, Brad Foster, and has taken them the distance. 
So it will be will prove a different different challenge than some of the guys that he's he's used to fighting. But I expect I expect him to get it done. Yeah, definitely. And I think McCann he's been fighting guys with decent records for a while now. He didn't kind of spend a lot of his career fighting journeymen. Um, I do think he's going to be pushed a bit quicker than the, your average prospect. And no, and and it's and, and it's exciting. I'm not going to try and predict what route he's going to go down or where he's going to be this time next year. But I'm interested. I'm kind of I'm invested in his career. To be honest with you, I'm really. I know you're. A, you said you're a fan as well. But I'm really interested to see if he comes up up and says, "Say, what's next for him and what is happening next year?" Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Cool, good stuff. Well, yeah, I feel like we've covered that card fairly well. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have time to cover the entire card, but four fights there, full of titles. Hopefully, some good fights. Hopefully, some competitive fights on BT Sport on on Saturday night at the Cop Box in London. Elliot, thank you for your time as always. I will catch you next week. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching.